Welcome to the Fredericksburg Turks weekly podcast episodes for the Final Phase of Trading Card Game. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Say what now? Oh, did I do that? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who wants to lead the podcast. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean. You need any money, Mo? I'll always, I'll always. Introduce the Turks. Take buddy. the lead. Bring it in. <laughs> Man. All right. Let's start it up. Start it up. <laughs> Let's right go. Let's go. Ah. So, man, just go ahead and have me. All right. So, show you. so we're here, guys. Um, we're the Fredericksburg Turks with the RVA Returners here for uh, a special episode. Of course, it's featuring them. And uh, we just finished a little sour um, event. It's a little e- LQ that we had. And, uh, well, we didn't, we didn't take it home. None of us in the room. Yeah. Cricket. But but that's but that's what happened. That's what happened. So that's what we're gonna talk about what happened today. Talk about also how we all know one another, and then uh, they're gonna share their little insights of what happened in Gen Con. So let's go ahead and, and kind of get the ball rolling there. I just realized this is a stack of old boy manga. Yeah, it's my girlfriend's. That's really <laughs> dope. That's really dope. Um, yeah, hey, welcome back. Thanks for having us, guys. <laughs> yeah, no hey, thanks for having us. This is a this is a treat. Um, we knew when y'all had your podcast, we knew it was only a matter of time before we were on here, because that's, uh, I mean... Well, we're friends. Yeah, we're, we're a group. Yeah. Right? We're, 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 we're the boys. <laughs> Beers for the boys. Beers for the boys. <laughs> for the boys. <laughs> yeah, guys, thanks for having us. Uh, I mean, I don't know, where, where do you guys want to dive in? There's a lot to unpack this week. I know, I mean, Stephen mentioned an LQ. Yeah. Um, he talked about, you know, kind of, kind of the origins of the of the team. So, I mean, let's, uh, you, you... Well, let's, you know, know. let's just start off there. How did we meet? Well... I know I didn't meet any of you guys. I started, and I've said before on our podcast, I didn't start playing the game until Opus 4. It was a, mm-hmm. you, you met on the same time I met him. Oh, really? No shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, then, yeah. I um. The only I, one that met earlier was Matt met Curtis, like, back in, like, Opus 1. You mean the yeah. notebook moment? That, yeah, the notebook yeah. moment. Yeah. That's a classic one. But, um, like, I wasn't even going to play that day. Like, Adam and Matt, they were like, oh, hey, there's a, there's an Opus 4 pre-release at Battlegrounds. And I was like, okay, I'm not doing anything. I'll, I'll play. And I, I had no idea... Like, I, I played the game, like, one time before I'd learned how to play gold bad. I was like, oh, cheeky combo deck. I'm all about it. So I had nothing to do. I came out, I played, and I had I had them give me, like, the crash course. Like, all right, I need you to show me how to play this game. Because I was, like, pretty balls deep into magic. I was like, I need you to show me how to play this game real quick so I can do something at this uh, pre-release. I ended up top fouring that thing. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I think my, my only loss that day was to Hunter. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, Jason, you ended up finishing first that yeah, day, Yeah, I took right? that, yeah. Yeah, all you guys were there, I believe. I, I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there? No, I was there, and I totally scrubbed that one. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. I scrubbed it. <laughs> because I think the first time I met you guys was the 3v3. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I met you guys or even... No, no, you, weren't you weren't you one of those? Because, like, I feel like you and Matt were talking about, like, trading for garnets or something. I don't remember. So, uh, when I know that I, I, I know... Oh, it's the same time when I played with you guys, we were at Sorcery and New York. So we were, uh, I was trying to hold. Yeah, the I remember box. that. That's actually when I met it you was, guys. It was a three-man tournament. I was trying to hold. I was trying to hold the winner box and like. Yeah, I was gone. I, that it was week. planned that. for like ten people to be there, and like the day of, like people start dropping like flies left and right. Like one, give me this reason. Like oh, I was on my way. Oh, this happened. My tire. Anyway, more moral of the story. Only you two showed up, and I was like, <laughs> I felt really bad, and I I, I, I was cool with the, the guy at the shop, Ryan, and I was like, hey, look, I know it's just three of us, but can we do something? And then he was like, I mean, we can't run an event until there's four people. I was like, I'll put the extra time for the other four, and then let's let's play it out. Yeah. Let's see who, mm-hmm. who's round robin it and uh, figure it out. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we played that one out. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, I was still pretty bad at the game. I was still, I was playing like the early days of Old Reliable, but also running like Science and shit. In the day. I, was like, <laughs> I was playing Mono Fire. Yeah, uh, good old you, guys, you guys were playing right. Fire, and I think I was on Wind Water Standard Unit. You were on Mono Ice. No, you were on because you Squall Lagooned me in yeah. our match. Yeah. Oh! I, I don't know what you played. I wasn't even yes. there that week. I was, so, you were playing like Opus so 3 Mono Ice. Remember, remember the, the deck that you taught me that was the main win condition of that deck was Sarah Snow, turn one? Oh, I remember. Yeah, I, yes. I gave you that deck. You gave then, me that yeah. deck, and yeah. then you had played me one day before, and you were like, all right, this is a really bad hand. I'm going to make a really scrub play. And I'm just gonna do it and see where it goes. And you played a, squ- a Laguna, oh, I remember that. Then Squaw, and then you dumpstered me. I had the cards in hand, and I was like, you know, I mold into this, and I was like, all right, Curtis did it. Let's see if I can do it. Laguna, Squaw, this card so I dumped my whole hand, mm-hmm. and then um, I, I won that match. It was, I mean, you were on the back for the very beginning. I was like, yeah. 
just two 9k beaters and you just start off the 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 because I mean, back then, thing. there wasn't much stuff to get rid of that kind of stuff. No, nah, like, Op Opus 4 was still, like, fresh, too. And I, I'm still learning the game yeah. at this point. So I, and I hadn't even seen, like, 90% of the cards in this game yet. So I'm like, oh, those guys are big. I don't know if I have anything that can actually uh, get around that. So it's just like, well, shit, I think I just lose here. I, mean, I did. <laughs> I think I ended up going like Owen, like Owen two or whatever. Yeah, we, did we do a best of three on that? I, uh, we did. We, we did best of three. Yeah. And then we still wound up. I don't think I took all the stuff. I think we still split mm -hmm. packs because I know you and Adam still left with product. Yeah, yeah, we got promos and shit too, so that was always really good. I mean, like it, it was cool. It was a good like intro. And then I think we ended up going. Did we go to YHP later that day? Because when there were two events happening. Um. Uh, not not that day. So uh, that. That event was over, set and done, and then uh, I had tried to get you guys to come back up, and I tried to hold something at Sage Madness's Game Haven, and then you showed up with Matt Jordan. I remember Had a couple that. other people yeah. show up there, and we also did a round robin, and then I think I placed third in that, um, you and Matt playing first and second. Yeah. And yep. then uh, after that, as soon as we finished that, we did go to YHP and... and that's finished. right, that's right. That, yeah. that was the day we, right after we finished there, we went to our locals at mm -hmm. YHP. But I think, you know, the 3v3 was kind of when it really came together. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that uh, that kind of struck, um, I tried to make a little, a little competition between us at that point. I remember messaging you about it, I believe, mm -hmm. those Chris. Yeah, um, and like, when uh, when I messaged you about it, you were like all about it, and I remember what got it into it. I was like, yeah, well, we took your pre-release, come take us, come get us back. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, all right, we're gonna set up this 3v3, and that's when we told Curtis about it. He's like, yeah, I'm all about it, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, that's when you guys came back down, and from there on, it was the friendly rivalry, and you guys took that 3v3. Yeah. You stomped us in the yard, like. Yeah, I, think I was <laughs> playing like Ice Earth, and I got stomped out by Austin. Austin. It was Austin Archer, yeah. 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 And, and like he, he was supposed to play something completely different last minute. He's like, "What deck do you have on?" Well, it's because like oh, it's cause I was supposed to play, play, I was deck. Supposed to play Wind Water, but he wanted to play Wind Water. So I was like, <laughs> "All right, fine. You play Wind Water. What does anyone else have?" And I was like, "I guess I'll play Ice Earth." Right. Well, now. And that was also right after like coming off the heels of Okimoto winning with that deck. Yeah, because I played his build. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I built that. I copied that deck to the T because I wanted to. It was a one. And I was like testing against it, so I just had it sure. on me. Yeah. And then I was like, I played with it a couple times here and there, but I was mostly just testing against it in case someone else picked it up. Oh sure, no, smart, um, that's a smart and way then, to do um, it. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I just handed it over to him, and he he kind of piloted it with you guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. You were on monsters. Oh, no, no, no. I was playing the water fire aggro with like Ash Bosch. No, Sabin. no, you played water earth monsters. You mm -hmm. definitely did. Did I, I have the three? Had the three v three? Yeah, because yeah. no, I, I played. Right. I played fire water in the three v three. I played water with monsters in the tournament after. Okay. He played fire yeah. water because oh, okay. I played mono fire, and I remember yeah. watching his fire stuff. Yeah, because I played wind lightning. Because I yeah. remember, I think I saw like all three of Alandus against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I think like after the three v three, like I just started playing my actual deck. Yeah. And then Chris yeah. switched decks to. Uh, uh, the, that because we, yeah. we were getting ready for ARG Charlotte at yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. We were. Uh, yeah. We also had those special rules that we had. We ran the world's rules where we couldn't run the same color. We yeah, unified team. Yeah. 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 The the format. I mean, the, well, the the three v three battle that we did wind up doing. We had three of us from Project Spark and, and th of course the three of them from Richmond, and we each had a deck. And as Jason said, um, it was the world's rules. So we had three decks. And they couldn't have more than a place in amongst all three. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were all. So playing. we all kind. Of, that's why I kind of like switch decks like in between because you know Stephen wanted to play Curtis's deck. Curtis was like, I'll just play whatever. And I was gonna run Mono Fire because that's what I was running the whole time during our our run at Fredericksburg. And I think that's really fun. Yeah. I think uh, Unified uh, t Team Unified, I believe, is the actual mm -hmm. like yeah. nomenclature for it. And plus, I think for the three v three, like we did like a community wide vote. Mm -hmm. um, like who should who should you know, represent. To represent the community, and then people ended up voting for us. But I think Adam was in contention. Yeah. He actually beat out Steven mm -hmm. in votes, but then he opted out and decided not to play. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just know, picked ours because like well, we didn't have enough. We didn't have a lot of people at the time, yeah. <laughs> and so it was supposed to be me, Chris, and Matt. But then Matt kind of bailed last second. And Austin was like, "Oh, I can show up, but only for the three v three, and then I gotta go home." Yeah, and your brother wasn't even playing at the time yet. He was playing, but he like, like just uh, started. Yeah. Okay. He was playing Mono Ice, wasn't he? No, he was on mono. Like, was he on mono wind? He, mono mono ice. He was on. He liked mono wind a lot, and he played. He played ice earth a lot too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was that was a lot of fun. And I, then I think you know after that, like we we started like you know trying to come to each other's locals, come mm -hmm. to each other's events. Um, then then ARG Charlotte happened, and I think that was like the real you know camaraderie there because we all actually did very well at that tournament. Yeah. I know. 
The yeah, last of Steven's glory days. No, no. <laughs> nah, you're fine. You've you just been off the wagon for a while. You were playing that goddamn Dragon Ball Super. That was your problem. You started yeah. playing that toxic shit. <laughs> see? Oh, see? No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a dad moment here. <laughs> see? That's what happens. You, you, should, you shouldn't sway, sway from your roots, man. <laughs> but uh, I know Adam Curtis and Steven all made top eight. I finished 10th, and Jason, I think you finished 16th. like 15th or 16th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so... Super, and then of course you had Matt Jordan finishing uh, up there as well. Sean was, uh, Sean was also yeah, top Sean, eight. Sean was sexy. We had like a solid like eleven from VA. That's what I'm saying. Nathan was, was top eight. Yeah. 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 Well, I still think to this day would have taken the tournament had they played the top four. I, mean, yeah. I think he, the man, he was just on Dude, fire. The way he was drawing, I can't. Exactly. I can't he had like all the Golbezes and all the Gilgameshes. Uh, Dude, he had a solid day of cards no matter what. It yeah. wasn't just that day, dude. We like, could've... he should have hit the had, He had me game. shook for a very there were, long yeah. time. There were multiple games where we were playtested. He would see every single deal we mentioned. Like, that was the saddest, like, games of Final Fantasy I ever played. Oh, you look sad. <laughs> I was, you look very sad. Yeah, like, I literally got, like, my shit handed to me. It was just... Oh, it was like back to back. Yeah. It was back to back. <laughs> like, I think I wrote in my tournament report, I thought I was playing Final Fantasy, but it was just him. <laughs> I, I remember you writing that article yeah. on Magnet. Yeah, it was, it was real bad. It was... Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I, me and Sam were, like, in turn four, and y'all were, like, getting up. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, that was fast. But yeah, man, ever since then, I, I, we, we've just been jamming games together and I, what's really cool is and I don't mean to like commandeer y'all's podcast no, no, I just like good. talking no, about no. this stuff that's why you're here <laughs> it's, it's made us all better players like yeah. I know for a 1000% mm-hmm. fact I've gotten better by playing with you guys and like we keep raising the bar on each other right yeah. and, and I think that's huge because mm-hmm. um, I know so what happens in, and this is just in just any gaming community mm-hmm. it gets stale yep. yeah um, the, the the people who want to get better get better and then they start beating everybody else and then there's no there, there's, there's, there's no they're, they're on top anymore. and then that's it there's but no they, challenge you plateau well, not, not to say that but you it's, plateau amongst mm-hmm. your community that this, you're the best one and that's it yeah. but the fact that like you got we continue to show improvements and put new decks and kind of keep on taking the reins from one another within ourselves it's yeah. like we're making ourselves grow because you can only like, be as good as the people around you right I mean like oh, yeah, sure. if well, you're like literally way above everyone else and for like a long period of time that's all you're going to get you're not going to get any better mm-hmm. unless someone else like challenges you mm-hmm. to that next part so I think yeah we definitely play off each other for that it's like UI Goku well, but UI us exactly <laughs> well and also like we travel right we travel to big events we travel to tournaments and then we not only do we get to see what other metas are doing, we've, we've discovered tech that people now use, the, the Curtis Kang special, the <laughs> Opus 4 Mime tech. Like, that's, mm-hmm. like, that's just just a ball buster. This, and this Opus, I'm tired of running into my own shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Like, isn't it crazy that dude, you the run into your own yeah, That's what happened to me at Island Game uh, for the LCQ. Like, someone's like, Jeremy, shout out to him. Uh, first tournament ever, and like he literally finished second. At that event, and yeah, because like, someone told them to run a Shadow Lord. Yeah, <laughs> well, we, we, we kept saying like turbos all over the place. Shadow Lord might not be a bad card to be running right no. now. Turns out, hey, there's and, nothing wrong with helping somebody out. Let the meta evolve and let people learn how to play. Against. Well, right, we don't, we don't live yeah. in the dark ages right. anymore, man. We live in the now. Grant, I can understand, and this is kind of a small tangent, but I can understand like keeping stuff close to the chest, like 100 percent is playing, yeah. but also, but like when there's like something big like that, especially if, if, after the decks out in the open in a tournament report. Right. They just fucking talk about it. Just, yeah. just like, hey, this is what we did. Like, I know the big thing, Opus 4 Mod. And then the other big thing that came out, and this was like more so in Kansas, the, the realm activating your opponent's monsters. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, that blew everybody's mind. Blew Adam's mind. Blew yeah. <laughs> my face. If you would have taken a snapshot of my face. Your eyes were so wide, you're like... <laughs> like, I'll stand by what I said before. It was like that gif of a little white boy, like oh yeah, doing a little thing and zooming out. <laughs> Dude, and, and I, I'll tell you right now, not a game. There's not a game where I play realm and I watch my opponent drop a monster. I'm like, oh, you're fucked. Well, I saw <laughs> actually Chris did it today. I saw you activate the guy's layac, and yeah. he was like, you can do that. <laughs> I activated your layac because I was going for the cognazo. Because I went for the cognazo turn, I was like, all right, activate your layac. He's like, what? Like, like, you can do that. I should, I, as sure as the sky is blue. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that, was, that proceeded to just win for off of that term. That was huge. That was that was huge. Like we see this stuff, and, and I told you all that to tell you this. Like we see this stuff because we play against each other. We we're at least in like five different group chats each, and we're yeah. always talking about stuff. Mm-hmm. We're always looking like, you know, and also you know, we both have our own locals that are super successful, right? Right. So you guys come to ours. We try our best to come to yours. 
you know, we got a tournament this Sunday, and like we all we always bring something new and different and fun, or we bring other decks. Like, all right, well, I'm playing this at the tournament. Let's jam some games with this real fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we do challenge each other, and I think well, we yeah. become a str- no, go ahead. One hundred percent. Like, uh, not only do we did we challenge each other to get better in in the game, but now with uh, your community growing at an exponential rate, and mm-hmm. you're doing these great events, you're challenging us to step our game up as well. Absolutely. Like, and that's that's making us make more moves. We're changing our um tournament structure. Our tournament structure now. Mm-hmm. We're we're doing packs per win instead of credit awesome. it gives people everybody a chance to earn some packs you know and uh it's it's good like it's good for the yeah. community as a whole and i think it's going to bring a lot of people back or back together yeah i think we're bringing back the dojo system too yeah we're i saw show. that i'm yeah. actually really excited now um i know you kind of touched on that um last time now have you figured out like do you like to have your strongest players be like the dojo leaders or do you want to so, give anybody a chance well, to we usually go by like a voting system mm-hmm. like at first it wasn't a voting system because it was literally like whoever you brought to. into the game so like yeah. when we started the community i brought in steven and then i brought in kyle and mm-hmm. then i brought in sean so they were automatically under my dojo because that was the one who was already playing and mm-hmm. i taught them how to play mm-hmm. um and then it was jason literally brought in like mike conley Corey. And a bunch of other people too so he just naturally had people under him so it was kind of easy to set up in the beginning but now that we already have a scene and those people that i've taught are now really good at the game Mm -hmm. so technically you know i can't really bring them back into that and say hey you're my student again now right right. i don't know you might have to reel steven back in (laughs) (laughs) so like right now what we're doing is we're trying to involve the community with it too so like we didn't want to just be like okay we're doing jojos again everyone you know pair up right we kind of like said like hey do you guys want to do this and it was a resounding yes everyone's Mm -hmm. like yeah we want to do this again so at this point what we did what we're doing right now is setting up like a voting system who do you want to represent the community who do you want to learn the game under Mm -hmm. who do you want to play with to learn and get better at the game Mm -hmm. and then from there we said you know pick three people and then people tend to pick you know people will gravitate towards the you know most skilled players you Mm -hmm. know who they feel like would be a good leader it's it's gravity towards the the best players um just the best to work with like yeah. just friendly overall people um and you know it's it's a great it's a great system to involve the community on anything I mean, like we're still in the process of telling up votes right now i think the cutoff is sunday sure. so whoever we get on sunday if there's like a tie or something like that we'll do an additional thing um but from there because we got a lot of new players and you know scott you know yeah scott was a really cool guy man yeah. glad he came down with y'all because too. like right after that tournament on um tuesday mm-hmm. like he messaged me he's like hey you guys inspired me to get better at this game like i'm re- i'm all in now i really want to play you know mm-hmm. give me lists for like you know really good decks i want to learn and get better so that kind of mentality is great so we, we do have new players getting in the game we also have michael as well mm-hmm. um from nova yeah he's also getting in the game too he, you know he wants to play competitively. he wants to be competitive and he so, wants to join the community yeah. yeah so like once we have like our actual three leaders from there we have to find out how we want to do it whether we want to do like a draft format like dress draft system and do that or you know say hey or have people just join whoever they yeah. feel like they need to join yeah. um we want to see where our progress is as teachers to yeah. the community and um we don't want the pressure of competition to be involved with the dojos yeah it's more or less to teach people how to play better how to be more competitive or just make better decisions yeah because it's really just more of a learning experience mm-hmm. um not really so much of like a competition thing like because before charlotte dojo is a really big thing and then once after charlotte it started to get a little too competitive Everyone so we, like, we dismantled it. Yeah, so we, we dismantled it. it. That was part it. of the reason that we stopped doing it, just because, like, oh, my dojo is obviously better than your dojo or something like that. Yeah. You know, things like that. So we wanted to avoid that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, uh, we're still working on, like, you know, finalizing it. But, you know, when it's all said and done, it's probably going to help everyone else get a little bit more competitive, and that's what we're just looking for. So. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's smart, right? Because that's, that's how you grow the community. Um, we're kind of at that Im- impasse right now where we want to nurture the competitive scene. Yeah. But we also don't want to alienate the casual scene. Yeah. And that's hard. Because I think you're I, at the crux that we were at. Yeah. You know, my right boss before. actually gave, uh, gave me the option, because I, I brought up Saturdays um, with Curtis. I was like, we could probably move it to Saturdays. I would, myself wouldn't be able to play mm-hmm. because I'll be working, but you know, for the, for the sake of the community, it'd be better, I think, because you guys would be able to make it more often, I feel. Oh, for sure. Um, and it just, it, I don't think it would work at the store because we have a lot of big events that happen on Saturday, 40K, all that stuff. Um, so my boss told me we could take Fridays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday nights, we could do events, and we're going to rotate between title, kind of like you guys do, and standard. Mm-hmm. So we'll just do that, rotate standard, and then our power rankings event will be Sunday. Nice. So we have the highly competitive people coming for power rankings, and then we have the people that just want to play in tournament, get tournament play mm-hmm. on Fridays. Oh, yeah. I think that's a smart way to do it. Now, I'm, I'm telling you right now, having a week, one week a month where you play title 
people get so invested in it. Yeah. Like this, like this week, this past Tuesday was supposed to be yeah, our title week. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. So like, yeah, it was requested that we move it back because a bunch of people that wanted to play couldn't make it. <laughs> so they're like, hey, can you move it back a week? Because we really, really want to play Tiger. Yo, you know for sure I'm coming Tuesday to play oh, yeah. Tiger, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Last time I went, it was like 24 people. Yeah, dude, people love it. And I might come down. I, I, I've been trying to... I, now that 7 actually has, like, summons, yep. I'm, not, I'm all about it. I, I'll probably put 7 And, and the trick show. with Tidal is, yeah, we run it in a tournament format. I could do everything else. But the, the thing is... Don't take it too terribly seriously because it, it's the fun format yeah. of the game. Yeah. It is the because you you can play the most broken, busted combos. You can play like cards you otherwise otherwise wouldn't be playing. Like it's a great way to explore the characters in your favorite game or play some silly combinations you otherwise can't play. Like yeah. Bart's on Bart's. Yeah, turn exactly. Like, yeah, that's Bart's. broken. <laughs> and like, but it's so fun. Like, granted, it sucks being on the receiving end of it. Like, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, you know what? It's title, whatever. Yeah. Shit's weird. I mean, I use it as an excuse to play my favorite game. Yeah. Right, right. I just wish six was playable in title. It's playable. That is technically well, not good. I say that when Ron does like yeah, Ron, very well. Ron with plays it like, every month. Yeah, we have. Yeah. But it gives me a chance to play twelve cards because outside of like Ash and maybe like Elbow Fear, yeah, twelve cards aren't great. They do well, have a good summon. I don't, I don't, they, do, they, have, they have like some of the best summons, and I think the the Sky Pirates version that I'm playing right now is pretty primo. Like it's really solid. I can't. I actually can't wait to play it on Tuesday. Mm. Yeah. So titles are a great way to bring people who like it's a very much like I like Final Fantasy. I'm kind of intimidated by the card game because like mm. especially when they see like guys like y'all playing mm. and y'all are just doing all these crazy you know sequences and combos and playing really fast you mean you saw, you saw how we play today we, 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 yeah, we boom, boom, boom. Ball with right. but you get people who are on the outside looking in they're like oh cool I love Final Fantasy 7 well have we got the format for you <laughs> and what's cool is a lot of these decks like what's great about them is they're not really expensive Except they're Final Fantasy 7 Final Fantasy yeah. 7 is expensive because you need like the clouds and the yeah. incense well the good news is the, the like the light clouds actually drop in value not too long ago mm -hmm. They're up like yeah, they're like twenty five now. Nice. Foil? Twenty five foil I think is thirty five. And then but then so, you yeah. could build something like Final Fantasy twelve, which is other than like depending on the build, other than like Ash and Chaos Walker, mm -hmm. cards aren't really expensive. Um or you could play um let's see, like Final Fantasy eight, which mm -hmm. is now very, very yeah. playable. Final Fantasy eight's very, very good. Um, right Final now. Fantasy two is a little pricey. Um, Actually, two um, might be the priciest. Yeah, two because you need emperors and Furion. Right. Well, a lot of legendaries involved there, but but the point is, like, if you have a favorite game and you just want to play title, guess what? You can, because not only is it something you can play at your locals on a monthly basis, you go to any major square event, there are title tournaments there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they're free to enter, sometimes they cost, like, five bucks. Yeah. And I don't know, like, uh, when we started doing title format in Fredericksburg, we haven't done it for a little bit just because of all these LCQs and things sure, like that. Sure, sure, sure. Like, when we first started, it was really successful. We had, like, what, 16, 18 people mm -hmm. on, yeah. like, a Wednesday or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, um... Like what I did to help the casual players is, you know, whoever wins, they get free entry for, you know, Sunday. I'll pay for them. See, that's awesome. Yeah. And then, like, I'd also make it so that, like, if I win, it gets passed down. Because, obviously, that'll be kind of grimy. Like, if I'm playing in my own it's event. Yeah. Your local and then just get first and be like, oh, looks like I win. I'll pay for myself this Sunday. <laughs> Got him. Got and then, in addition him. to that, like, we, you know, also had another thing, like a voting system, like, who had the most innovative title deck or sure. who had the most innovative combo. And if you, you know, won to vote, you buy a free pack, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I, th I, think that, I think that's a neat way to, to do things. Oh, the air just kicked in. I feel it. feels good. <laughs> but, um, like, I think stuff like that is really, really neat. And it's, again, like, you have the time, like you just said, you've picked, you have a day for your uh, for your competitive play, mm -hmm. and now you can do things to nurture. Because what also what will happen is if people play it casually and they get they're like, man, maybe maybe I should try it competitively. There's always that that kind of that that gateway into wanting to play it competitively. Because I think there are some people in our community who play it casually that would like to, like uh, Ethan's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. um, he plays. He played it casually when we first started. But then, like he, when he went to that last LQ game there, he got a taste. He got a taste of success. He got, the itch. He, he got the itch. He's like, man, I guess I can do pretty good at this game. And I'm like, yeah, Ethan, you, you, you can. You're competent enough. And like and that, that's when it goes back to nurturing that competitive play. Yes, you are good, but but then you got you have to like, have like your real dad moment and be like, you're going to lose a lot. You're going to mm -hmm. take your lumps. You are going to be playing against people who are just better at this game than you. It, it, it's, and it's not like a knock at you, you're still learning. And mm -hmm. the, it's and the hard knock. The more you, you play against these people, you're going to get better. And even yeah. like that, because I mean, it, it, 
It's cards. I mean, RNG is a fact. Well, you're I mean, fucking telling me. <laughs> <laughs> RNG is a fact. I mean, you can have everything you need, but if they have it, well, you ain't going to win it. So yeah. you can also just understand that as well and kind of know that you'll get through this sleep. Yeah, a lot of people. He's talking to himself. <laughs> Inner monologue. <laughs> but but, it, but it, it's a very, very good point. Um, variance is a very real thing in card games. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of luck of the draw. I mean, you're you're seeing X amount of cards in your deck in any given game. And, you know, sometimes, like, like today's match, I mean, I still pulled it out, but... Man, I could have won that game so much faster if I'd have seen a Cog Nozzle, but all three of them were like in the bottom 15 mm -hmm. cards. Some, and sometimes that just happens. Yeah. You know, but, but it's a draw. Right. So, it is. what do you recommend then for like players that are trying to get into the competitive scene? How do you like get into that mindset and accept that all this is going to happen? You know, because like a lot of new players, like when we started the channel, I put a message on the Facebook mm -hmm. page like, hey, what do you think makes a good player? Mm -hmm. And what do you think, what level do you think you're at right now? Mm -hmm. And if so, what do you think you can do, or what needs to be done to make you an above average player? And the resounding answer, you know, was like, a good player is someone that can play any deck and do well or identify, you know, whatever situation you need to play in and, mm -hmm. you know, be able to do it. That's fine, you know, sure. And then a lot of people identify themselves either as average or below average, because a lot of them just don't have a lot of, I don't know, they don't have to hunger. Like, not, not even that. Like they, they feel like they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they make too much mistakes or too emotional in the game. So if something doesn't go their way, they just feel defeated. And mm -hmm. that's just a constant theme. Like how do you suggest you know, people to get into that and uh, get over it? I mean, uh, first off, you don't have to play every deck to be good. You can play one archetype and be really good at one archetype and dominate people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I did for uh, Mono Fire for a while, and there, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're really good at one deck or one archetype or one type of deck, and you play that, like you know, aggro or control or whatever mm -hmm. have you, like you can stick to that, and you can still be a really good player and win a bunch of events. Um, I'd say like a little bit of salt is good, mm -hmm. a good thing, as long as it comes from the right place. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that shows like what well, you said, hunger. Mm -hmm. Like hunger is important, and I mean this is coming from like fighting games too. I know I do this yeah. a lot, but like. Well, you, have so to, you have to have that yeah. drive, yeah. right? Like, and, and it's not. There's nothing wrong if you don't have it. If you don't have it and you want it, just find the means to tap into it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, see, what, ask other people what makes that, what gives them their drive to keep moving forward, and what, how do they get over their defeats? Yeah, like, I mean, I'm just a competitive person by nature. Like, mm -hmm. in anything I play, it's hard for me to like do something now and not be competitive at it, which mm -hmm. is. Maybe a bad thing. Well, our background know. with fighting games in general, yeah. it just, you have, we that, have to. Honestly, fighting games changed me. Yeah. As soon as I started <laughs> playing fighting games, I'm like, I can't look at any game. This, no, it, it doesn't matter what game it is. Right. It could be like Mario Golf. <laughs> like, I, I can't look at it the same anymore. For me now, it's like, oh, I, I'm going to beat my opponent to death. Like, you identify <laughs> the rules of the system yeah. and you, the laws of it. Yeah. How, do, how, do, how do you you exploit those rules? Yeah. You're yeah. going to do it in eight strokes, I'm going to do it in seven. Come see. Bowser has a 2.4 walk speed. <laughs> and, like, there's nothing wrong if, like, you don't have that, like, fire, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're a casual player, like, do mm -hmm. you. Like, but if you do want to step up to that next level, like, it, you're going to need that hunger or else you're, it's going to get boring for you. Yeah. Right. And or you'll, you, if you don't have the hunger, it's just going to defeat you. Yeah. Like, also, you know, like, I feel like this is something that a lot of people do when they start getting, like, they start complaining about things that are too good or things that need to be banned. And I'm not saying that's never the case, mm. but you should always try to look the other way. Like, be like, how can I beat this? How can I overcome this? Or, like, is it so good? Maybe I should play it. Mm. Um and find that balance. Because also, like, when I played Yu-Gi-Oh, um, a lot of people kept on thinking, like, what's going to happen to make me lose? You have to think about what I need to do to win. That kind of mentality. It's like, it's just, it's really just mentality when it comes down to it. Like, if you're always afraid of losing. Yeah, don't play not to lose. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, exactly. It happened, so at the LQ today, I lost the turbo discard in about five seconds. Right. Um, <laughs> and the dude, like, as he swung for game, like, apologized to me. And I'm like, hey, man. There's nothing to be sorry about. Like, I know this this deck exists. I knew coming into this match what you were on, and I mulliganed because of that. Um, well, I mean, I mulliganed. I should have done something different, but that's another thing. <laughs> um, but, like, I mean, yeah, he beat me, and I, I lost in, like, three turns. Um, and I wasn't even mad. Like, I was trying to think, like, what should I have done differently? I probably shouldn't have kept the hand that I kept. That's, that's the the real thing right there that's the hunger right there is that instead of getting upset at your opponent for outplaying you or whatever <laughs> making excuses you need to th think back at what you did wrong or look to the people that are beside you and ask them what did i do wrong 
because then you can correct it the next time you go into that match. Yeah, like uh, the people. I'll say one more thing. Now, no, like, man, you know, the people that are saying like their nerves are getting to them, they're doing these misplays and stuff. You gotta learn from those. Mm-hmm. Like, if you make that misplay, like like I, I did one today. Real like, glad I did one too. Uh, like, <laughs> if if you make that, just make it a point to like don't do that again. Like that should be like burned into your right. brain. You need to remember that moment if, and the the shakes, whatever you got at the time that that misplay happened, yeah. and just don't repeat it. Like, you don't want to feel that again. Well, you got to do, you got to do what I like to call the Chris Pacula. Um, he was a magic player who lost a, uh, he, um, he missed like pretty much his chance to get into the Hall of Fame based on like a, a misplay that he mm-hmm. did because he didn't see the I right think I, I think I've heard Yeah, and he that, kept, yeah. he kept the card that like in his wallet for a long time. Mm-hmm. And if that's what you have to do, like, yeah. if you got to have that reminder, that constant reminder, like if you made a misplay with a card, take that bitch to the back of your bedroom door. Something so you, if you're hungry, you have to see that every day and be reminded of it. Right. I know that sounds kind of like harsh and very, but like, like do what you have to do to stay hungry. And like, mm. like, uh, believe me, I, I can talk for hours. <laughs> uh, three, uh, three out of three LQs, I go undefeated in Swiss. I make it to this is the, this is the shortest I fall. I made it to the finals both times, fell short in three games. Today I went undefeated in Swiss. I beat a really good player in top eight. And then I had to go to top four, and I got turboed. Mm-hmm. So by like, Jason, by Jason, <laughs> by Jason. But you know, He's in the this thing, room. Yeah. But the thing is, he he played the deck for the most part right. I saw a couple things I would have done differently, mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter. Right. Um, a win's a win, mm-hmm. and I watched I I watched it slip away for the th- I watched my nationals qualifier slip away for the third time in a month, especially when I. And, and it happened when I outplayed everybody in the room mm-hmm. all day long. Did was I upset? I was pretty upset for yeah. like a good like two minutes. I had to go outside and put my bag away. But I came back in and like I'm still I was still very frustrated. But I didn't make excuses. I didn't right. blame my opponent. No, yeah, I like didn't. like that that moment where you got upset and like I I felt awful. Like I didn't mm-hmm. my 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 whole goal for going today like. I got one hour of sleep last night. I didn't intend to go as far as I did, but mm-hmm. I was hungry. Like, yeah. you know, I even said, like, when we got to the top eight, I was like, let's just go. We don't know, no eating. Yeah, yeah, no break. I want to yeah, I I I keep going. And, um, like, that's, it was, it was just nuts today. Like, yeah. I mean, and that's a perfect segue for our next topic is talking about the LQ today. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so just, I guess we can yeah, start we'll, with. We'll just go around the room. Whoever yeah. wants to, whoever well, wants to start. We'll, we'll start out, we'll let it slowly get better. So I'll go with the worst possible results myself. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my first two first two matches. I well, first of all, what are you playing? I, well, I was playing Mono Lightning. Oh, it's my old faithful, really. That's which I think is the deck for you. By it, it, it is, it is my old faithful, really. It's like what I originally started playing with uh, back in Opus Two, and I stuck with that all through Opus Three. Although I made a very bad audible play at Nat, and somehow ended up on Mono Water. But besides the point, Mono Lightning is is my main deck for the most part. And so I, I put put some new stuff together. I mean, I know the deck to the T. Yeah, there was some adjustments. But first matchup was against uh, Ice Viking, uh, Layla, pretty much with Verno and Nidhogg. Danny. Yeah, you're playing against Danny. 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 Yeah, Danny. Yeah, I'll sit right next to that. And um, I mean, I know what the deck. I know what his deck does. I know what my deck does. And I know I need to get up in them guts quick because swirl as, some insides. As soon as <laughs> as soon as he has enough resource to Nidhogg me, that tempo is gonna switch. I got him to like five points of damage and I'm at one. And I think I have I have like four forwards on the board, four backups. He's got four backups, no forwards on the board, but he's got like eight cards in hand. So guess what's coming next? Nidhog into cracking the div out. Renoa, Nidhog again. It, it, from there, I, I just fell short. Uh, I couldn't put any more points of damage on him after that. And then he slowly creeped up. And uh, got back. So even though he had no cards in hand after making that play, he just played next to he drew Layla Viking, and he recovered quick. Yep. And I was on a back play. Such mediocre cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'll be I'll be the next day. Whoever whoever and this could for anybody listening, whoever thought Layla was a bad card or an average card, not only were you wrong, you were dead ass wrong. That card's borderline broken. That card's insanely good. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it, like you can, Shit. You, can so <laughs> you can be in a deficit and it's it, oh I mean I got no cards in hand I got a couple back I got backups to play Layla 
I'll recover. I'll tell you right Layla now. Layla Viking. All right, if you, I got a more If you were to see my face every time I drew into a Layla or had a Layla in my hand, I mean, I was just like... <laughs> if, it was just, if it wasn't for the hat... <laughs> I had one moment. I had one moment. I did notice during our match when you drew into it, like your hat was down. You had the poker face all day, mm-hmm. but there was one moment when you play, before you played the Layla, you drew and you were just like, like there was that hop, like your hat hopped, and I was like, okay, he's playing, he's playing what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, after after that matchup uh, with the sad ending, I, I played a mirror um, mono lightning versus mono lightning. In that match, I thought I had it as well. I mean, he had two backups to me having five. Sure. I mean, the game was pretty much all said and done at that point. Um, and for, instead of playing forwards out of my hand and kind of swinging, for some reason I was obsessed with recurring my outside in my graveyard or breaks to, like, to, so I can do that. Instead of just playing like the aim on and the stadium from my hand, I kept on trying to do that. And so every time I tried to outside him from my break zone, he would just remove his own forward, dull it, and then kill my... Yeah. Kill my uh, Al Sid. He did this consecutively, and I know that this is a play that you had told him about. So literally, literally the round ago, <laughs> literally the round before. Yeah, it was literally, literally the round before. Mo- I'm aware. I'm aware. A play that you, <laughs> a play that you told him to do, uh, and, and kind of how, how to how to beat the mirror. Yeah, cause he. <laughs> so I was playing Scions, and uh, I played Joe first round, and I played a Papalemo, and no one knew. And I held at Ramu. I knew he was gonna play Al Sid. And he goes to Al Sid, and he goes, like, legal? And I go, no. And I was like, <laughs> so I, I tapped one, pitch one, played Rom. I go, 7K? I'll dull my own guy. And he goes, oh, so it triggers. I said, no, no. <laughs> I was like, he dies. I just get dulled. So I tried to recur this Al Sid on three consecutive turns. He had all three removes. <laughs> <laughs> he got, got. Yeah, because Joe... Joe came up to me like as soon as top eight cut happened. Yeah, he was like, I heard. He's like, yeah. thank you, thank God I played you first round because you showed me how to use Ramu the proper way. <laughs> I didn't know he was talking about saving I mean, at the time. I had Ouch. one point of damage. He had five. Eventually, with me having to pay for that, I'll sit three on separate occasions. He caught up, played an Estinian, and the game turned in his favor. Slipped away from me yet again. Yeah. Snatching defeat then, from then, the jaws then, of victory. That was a silver lining, though, because I had a buy. That was a full victory. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. That's a 7-0 victory, sir. That's a 7-0 victory. Untouched. Untouched. <laughs> um, after that, I play a tempo ice build, and um, I mold my hand, and I drew oops all forwards. Mm. And he just back up, back up, and I wound up paying. I overpaid, I believe, for like a Lulu. And, I mean, he's got four backups, a forward on the board. He's got the occasional discard here and there. I'm on the back foot. Tempo, tempo Ice does what it does. If I got no backups, Lightning don't do that. I believe that was Rob. He top forward the last LQ. Yep, yep. Nice guy. Great guy. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Great, great guy. yeah. Um, he, he wound up beating me. Um, so, kudos to him. Um, and then my last matchup was with Ethan. And I couldn't have asked for a better draw. Too bad it was too late. Oh no, <laughs> of course. I couldn't have asked for better. I think turn three I had five backups and an Alu on the board and I still had like two cards in hand. Oh, the dream. Yeah, and then at that point, every time I draw something, I'm just killing anything and everything. I, I believe I played in a day uh, and then I also had I, 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 I had four backups and the Adea backup. I cracked that to play the Adea and then I had another day in hand and then I just Adea specialed all in one. It was like, all right, those two forwards are gone. Seems good. Seems real good. Um, so two and three is how you finished. Yeah, uh, yeah, two three. Technically, a one win, but we'll we'll, we'll take we'll take the yeah, inch or a miles. Vin Diesel's fond of saying <laughs> whether it's an inch or a mile. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take it. Uh, but that was pretty much my whole uh, experience wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was next worst. Um, <laughs> I started out okay. I started out one and I played against Joe. Um, yeah, the, he played into the Ramu, and then he also. He popped his scholar and targeted my Alula and my um, Wool, and I go, okay, fizzle. And he's like, shakes his head, yes. And then he plays Onion Knight and targets Wool. I said, no. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, it only fizzled her damage, right? I said, no. It fizzles the whole effect. <laughs> I was like, it's it. the whole thing. And uh, so Joe learned that too, the hard way. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was able to take that. And then my second match, I was feeling pretty good. I got, I played against Steven, mm-hmm. uh, other Steven, got mm-hmm. Beach Steven, and. Um, he was on Vikings, like Mono Water Vikings. Yeah, he was on Mono Water Dude with Vikings. Yeah, and I put him to six, and then he put me to six, but I was like, had the board. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to win next turn. So, like, I swing out to put him to six. 
And then the next turn, he like he swings at me to put me to six. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine with this because I'm just going to win. And then he plays Trace Fogar. And he goes, I'll mill five and skip your next attack phase. <laughs> well, like, hell. All right, that just happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, he played like um, Cloud of Darkness, I think, or something. Yeah, he and, played like, Cloud. And like that was it. I couldn't yep. recover. Pretty um, good. Good. And then right after that was the turbo match where it lasted about five seconds, <laughs> where I, I kept a hand because I was like, okay, this hand's really good unless he has triple discard. And I've done this so many times to myself, like an idiot. I should just like mull, hard mull for like the cards that are better mm -hmm. instead of trying to like play for the double and like get the backups established. I should have mm -hmm. just like milled for, or mulled for a, like a wall or a lure or something. And so I keep it because I'm like, okay, if he double discards, I'm just going to go like turn one back up into turn two of the least slaw, and I'm set up and good. And then I can kind of play whatever I want. And then he goes, Dalmaturge Argath Gespers. I'm like, okay, this is bad. <laughs> it's a pretty good opener. <laughs> and then I managed to get like a Lua on board, and then he Shiva's it, and I was dead in like three turns. Because uh, um, the follow up was snow. Yeah. And then after that, I played. What did I play after that? Man, I don't even remember. It was bad. I was tired. I was tired today. Yeah, you like slept the whole <laughs> drive down. I think I think it was the uh, the sandwich that did you in. Yeah, it also gave me heartburn. It was not a good look. <laughs> um, oh yeah, no, I played uh, Tannis. He was playing like Fire Earth. Yeah. And I basically anytime he tried to do some cryo stuff, I was like Ramu, Ramu, yeah. <laughs> Ramu. Um, and then after that, I was like dead tired. I had to play Curtis last round, and we weren't sure if like. Even if one of us won, if we were going to get in or not, because we were both 2-2. Two, two. And <laughs> this is when I realized I was tired. <laughs> so I had a dragon out, and he had to pour him. And I played one turn, I'm like, okay, he, if I dragon, he's just going to pour him my dragon. I'm like, okay, so I Ramu, try to deal, or try to dull, pour him, and deal 7k to Yuna, and he does, like, his carbuncle stuff to save Yuna. And then he dulls pour him, and then I crack dragon to KO Ash. Because I think he had just, like, got a wrestler. Yeah, like a wrestler, but the turn before that, I... Uh... I think I had a Titan in my hand already. Yeah, that's what it was. So I tightened, saved the Ash, and then next turn. Right. Yeah, and then I played another Dragon. And then the very next turn, everything that I had just thought about the previous turn, I just completely forgot. And Porum's upright, and I go, I'll Dragon Ash. And he goes, I'll Porum. And I'm like, oh yeah, I played around that last <laughs> <time>. <laughs> I played around then, but not this one. I totally forgot that yeah, was it, there. it didn't matter. Curtis was in control like the whole match anyways, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I needed Shantoto, and I, did you hit back to back? Was yeah, that, I, I hit twice match? for two Shantotos. Yeah, so I run exactly top. two Shantotos and Scions, and he hit back to back. Oh, the snipe, the snipe. Um, I think I think that was the only card that would have gotten me out, to be honest. That's yeah. fair. So then, yeah, I finished two or three, which wasn't good enough. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I guess I'm next. I uh, was playing Carbuncle. Um, his initial list was by Colin. Um, mm -hmm. I just told him to send me it because I wanted to test it out to see if this is something I wanted to take in that. Mm -hmm. And I made some improvements to it and added some different cards. I put in like the two drop battle for sure. to combat against like Vikings and stuff like that, which did help. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'll, I'll play probably play more if I decide to play the deck mm -hmm. like uh, on a more serious level. But uh, round one, played against Josh from Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. um, he had the Yeringer Mill deck that went undefeated in Swiss. So like. I, I, yeah, I played that deck for my LCQ win at that same very shop in North Carolina. So like I kind of knew like what I needed to do to get around it. So I just you know played what I need to get rid of like the important cards. Mm -hmm. uh, made sure to fizzle on you know like the phoenixes and stuff like that when you try to bring it out. Like you know make him think that the Paul was safe and try to swim with that. Then I end up killing it. Mm -hmm. um, the two drop Yuna save my save my butt. Every time, good, best yeah, card in the deck. every time he tried to swing, I was like, all right, Carbuncle, draw, draw. I mean, draw, and then just, like, block and kill it. And I just basically did Carbuncle, like, even if he wasn't doing anything, like, for three, four turns, and I was just getting free cards. Yeah, two CP, draw a card. Yep. <laughs> and I get it back, do it again next turn if you have to. Mm -hmm. So just basically did that. Round two, played against Danny. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was in control for, like, most of the game. Uh, like, I was, you know, giving it to him pretty bad. But <laughs> later on, he like stabilized. He played Nidhog, and then he renewed the Nidhog, and then got rid of the Shanto to my hand. I was like, "All right, can't come All back right. now. You got this." So I lost that one. Round three, played against uh, Stephen for Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. um, and then from there, like I just had a really bad hand. While well, getting to an even worse hand, I had like no backup, so I was forced to play like four CP dudes like every turn, mm -hmm. and then he just kept on bouncing them back. So I was just like, "All right." You got this. Um, he just outvalued you. It sounds yeah. Like. yeah, that hurts. If you're forced to play a four drop and you just get Leviathan on that, mm -hmm. that hurts. 
Because, like, they know that you have no backups in your hand, because that's why you're making this play to begin with. Yeah. So it's just, like, a low blow. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I couldn't really do anything for it. Um, the next round after that, played against... Uh, one of the guys was playing the Mono Wind deck that won Australia. And I play that deck a lot, mm -hmm. so, like, I kind of knew, that like... deck's really cool. Yeah, like, he's seen me play it, like, mm -hmm. a bunch of times. I love playing against the PPU deck. Yeah, the yeah. PPU deck. So, like, I, I already knew, like, what the combos are, like, what the problems cards are. So, like, I just kind of played around it, and I was perfectly fine. Um, and then last round, play against Adam. Um, he was definitely tired. And when he did the dragon play on the Porum, I was kind of confused. I was like, Porum? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, and then afterwards, like, I wasn't sure, like, how it'd end up. Because I knew, like, a couple X2s wouldn't make it. Uh, I was trying to do my best to block for you, so sorry. Uh, that's, a, yeah, that, that, that's a good segue, because uh, you boys ain't blocked for me once. <laughs> man, man, like... <laughs> to be fair, like, I haven't played in many LCQs that you were at. Because at the first LCQ, that's where I beat you in final. Yeah. <coughs> so, you know, we both weren't qualified at that time. Yeah, so, so it's, it's every man for every himself. Every man for point. himself. And then the second local qualifier that you played at was in um, Yorktown. Yorktown. And I didn't go to Yorktown, because yeah. I was at a wedding. Yeah. So I couldn't block for you there, and I couldn't block for Steven either, who also went to like North Carolina at that mm -hmm. time. And then the third one you played at was today, yeah. and unfortunately, I was not able to squeak into top eight cut. And even if I did, it would be us and that. Uh, it would have been that awkward. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So like, so like I would have just scooped you anyways, and you won your top eight match anyway. Right, and that, that's a good segue because I actually had a really good day of cards. Um, I went five zero in Swiss. I was on Mono Water Monsters. Uh, beat Hunter, Nance in top eight, and then lost to Jason in top four. Uh, my first match was against the uh, Mono Win deck, the Pew Pew deck. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty one-sided, actually, because um, I once Minmu hit the deck that I took out of it, he was never able to really establish a board presence either, because every time he like played Ball Theater, so I was like, well, cool, I'm just going to play this guy, and I'm going to Cloud of Darkness this, I'm going to do this. Cool, I've got a 14k gal. What are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had you know, walk out. I had nothing but gas, and then I had you know, Cleone was always on deck, so pretty much making any summons he could play just just useless. Yeah. So I, I just outvalued him and just uh, just took over the game. Every time I looked over at your board state, dude. There was always like at least 15 oh, cards. Dude, I was, I was always, I was always, I was always like, does that? Mono Water Monsters does that. Yeah, yeah. I was always Bongers. like six or seven forwards wide. Like, all and then the when time. I played you, two, like five I'm backups, there. five monsters, and the crazy and then, like, thing seven is, forwards. even if I would have gotten sh any, any of the, the matches I got Shantoto, like the next turn I was right back. To yeah, that's that. Yeah, because like, that does. Your board was like monsters anyway. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So round one was against that, and then the next four, uh, the next four rounds of Swiss, I, I'm up against Mono Ice. So I have to play four out of my five matches in Swiss for Mono Ice. Uh, round two, I played against Rob. He was on tempo. Um, he got out, he got out of the gates pretty quickly. Um, he said his hand wasn't all that great, but he was able to get a couple backups down. He had like, um, I think he had, he didn't have Celeste, but I think he had Lock. He had like Shock Trooper. Like he had some bodies, but I was able to get my backup line going. I, again, we got the Cleon value to stop his summons. We've got Leno with Gogo -Go on the board. We've got Malbro. We got Dragons on deck. Uh, Tonberry was pretty key there. Uh, Pretty much against ice, like once Cloud of Darkness hits the board, you can't do anything. Like the, the game's over. Like Cloud of Darkness just seals the deal. And I think I hit it. I hit a, a Gal special on him a couple times. Like, I once once I got my backup line, I was in firm control. And I'm not gonna downplay it. Several like swingy turns were like, all right, cool, Lena Viking, go. I got my seven fours. And next turn's like Cloud of Darkness. So I just kind of just straight up outvalued him. Um, then the next next round I played against Jason. Um, he was on Turbo Ice, and um, I actually I I, I, tried, I actually practiced this match. I was so worried. This was the match I was worried about going into today because we played we tested this week, yeah. and I was like one in four against. Yeah, it. we tested a lot of games uh, with DGS Turbo Ice discard, and I took like every single one of them except for one. Yeah, and I was just like, well, I think what I need to do here is play some backups because I I think Mono Water the way you beat that deck is. You get to three backups as quick as possible. That's why I run two Evokers in the deck. Evoker was such a good card for me today because anytime I played against Ice, I had two Evokers out. Yeah. Because that card's that card is really really good because you can ramp without having to you know to get rid of your yeah. hand. Because I mean, if you think about it, when you have the three backups, you're playing the same strategy as they are. Because mm -hmm. like their strategy is they can play everything they top deck, but you can't. But if you play three, you can play everything that you top deck, but and they can't too. Better. But your cards are better. Exactly. Yeah. And it got to a point where you know like. I felt like maybe you stumbled 
early on. Oh, and, yeah. And I, I took I, the fact when I when I went turn one back up, because I was on the play, I would turn one back up, and I think you went back up and like Argath, and I was like, oh, shit. I I, need it was to. a bad hand. Yeah. So I got Mulligan like, into it, so yeah. I was like, well, I need to go ahead and just take full advantage of this. So I'm like, uh, I played like a backup. I played a monster, and I played. I, I had I had the cards in hand to like play a lot of stuff, like establish a board presence. Still have cards left to not worry about the sit all stand. Mm -hmm. um, then I, I, it just snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. Like he was there was a point where I, his board got a little wide, but then it was I think uh, it was that I believe I either cognazo you or just outvalued you with uh, cloud of darkness. I don't. Remember. Well, your cloud of darkness hit and just started picking me off one by one. I was hoping on I was praying on the uh, the mill out. Yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, because right, yeah. yeah, we were. You were and then for you that. that the final the final match was a cognazo bomb. Yep, yep. And then next round, I had to go right back into turbo against Jr. I told you I'd get your name right. <laughs> um, his hand was fine. Like he started out with double discard, and I oh, was like, triple? No, he got double on me. But then I was like, right, back up. And I was like, back up. Next turn, evoker, back up. Like I was, I was at three, and uh, no, actually. He was against him. I actually my turn. I played backup turn one. He did stuff. My next turn, I had five cards in hand. I just went pass. That's actually a really good. That's play the best way to do it. Yep. Danny yep. did that to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I have like so now I've got seven cards and now I can do stuff and not fear it. Especially when like his turn two was like a buckaboo or something mm -hmm. like that. I was like, say that again, so people can play against Turbo Ice. The right way. The right way, yeah. Against Turbo Ice, if you have five cards in hand, one of the best things you can do on turn two is just pass. We'll see what they do next. Mm -hmm. And Plus, also, because if you keep your hand at five and you draw to seven, if you play something like a Cognazo, their thermos will be at one still. Because, and you'll kill them. Yeah, you, you will, will actually kill, kill them. Because if you play with five cards, you probably will be dropped down to two. Yeah, you, you, against Turbo Ice, you just have to play their deck better than they do, if that makes any sense. Um, and I have a lot of reps on the deck, so I, I knew what I was getting into. Like, I knew them, and, and this isn't a knock at Jason. I know I knew his deck better than he did. I knew uh, damn right JR did. was playing my list from the first LQ. Yeah. So <laughs> you damn right I know that list. <laughs> um, and then I just I just kept the train going and eventually just overtook him. And then the next round was against uh, Hunter's friend. I think his name was either Will or Allen or something like that. Um, he was on Tempo Ice. He was a newer player. He, we, had, oh, he actually has a code name with us. What? It's, uh, what is it? LT15G. LT15G. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, God, my heart. Because it stands for less than 15 games played. Oh, LT15G. <laughs> he is, <laughs> is LT15G. And uh, I played him. He was actually having a really good day of cards. He was undefeated going against me in the last round. And um, I just, not only did I outvalue him, he did. He, he felt like, the thing about monsters, a newer player is not going to know what to do because they don't know what half their cards do. Oh, um, well, after, I mean, I'll just say this. When I was, my match finished and I went over there, and as soon as I saw him like pull Minwu and start reading it, I'm yep. like, that didn't. Right, that's so not good. Yep. I'm like, yep. that's not good. Yeah, because there, there, were, there <laughs> were times where right, I, I he played. Tried, he tried to Shiva, um, to stack some damage. He did some damage previous to one of your forwards, and then he Shiva it afterwards. It shouldn't die now. I was like, no. no but like, Minwu re resets the damage, and then um, he was still on kind of fuzzy about like because he flipped a Sid Allstate. I had one card, and he flipped the Sid Allstate on the next because like maybe I can combo off that stack. I was like, ah, you can't. It's like split. He's a Magic player. I was like, mm -hmm. it's like split second in Magic. It doesn't go on the stack. You can't do anything with it. So he's like, oh, okay. And, like, I just, every time I, I had answers for it, I think that game, I think I had, like, six Cleons. Yeah. Like, I just got oh so God. much. Like, it just, every time he played some, I was like, cool, I'll get Cleon back. Oh, let's uh, play Pot Cat. Oh, here's Cleon. Um, cool, I'll pop this Cleon. Uh, I'll play another Cleon. Like, I just, I just, I had, I had them all. What was the first advice I gave to you when you started playing Monolore Monsters? Oh, make sure Cleon's on the board at all times. Because, <laughs> uh, and that's how you win. That's how you win. Like, if, Here's the thing, and and sometimes that decision's hard because there are times where like I would I would overlook a Tonberry yeah, for a Cleon. Yeah, there, like, especially during it. your yeah. top eight match against Hunter, I yeah. saw whenever you you had Cleon in the grave for like the longest time, and then whenever you play like a, a Gal or something like that, you kept on sifting through. I saw you look at the Cleon for like a couple seconds, and then you offer like a Green Dragon or like a Tonberry or something like that. Yeah, well, because because Cleon's the most important card in the deck, and then uh, so that's a good segue. So I beat him, and then I go to top eight. Um, the, I'm actually playing against Hunter in top eight. Um, me and Hunter like have this. It, it's like like this almost like this rivalry going. Like we always go back and forth. Like I beat him at Charlotte, he beat me at the Kefka Cup. Uh, I beat uh, I beat him somewhere else. He beat me in Swiss at Gen Con, and then I beat him today. Now I'm not going to downplay. He uh, so game one, I, I it was a clean ranching. Mm -hmm. Game two, he gave it right back to me because know what the first two points of damage were in game two. 
uh, Cleone Cleone. So I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. So I, I, <laughs> I, I lose that game. Uh, I lose it pretty clean. Yeah. Game three, he has an awkward hand, and mine's pretty good, and I'm able to kind of get my pieces going. But the, where, where he messed up, and he like realized it immediately after he was done. Um, and, I, and even Adam was saying, I could have se- sequenced better, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But I party attack with Lena and Realm. He's at like five, so he, he, he can't take much more. He goes, I, he takes the part, and he, uh, he uses Fam for it to pop my Cleo. And then and on the board I have I have Realm, Lena, Gal, and the Emperor. He's got Gal, Cobalt Droid, two, two Cobalt Droids, and a Green dragon, dragon. A dragon. So where's I going with that? Oh yeah. So he um so I bl- he pop use the fan for it to pop my clan. I draw a card. He chaoses the Lena, mm-hmm. and he doesn't have Yuna out. So I just play Layla with no Viking, unfortunately. So, but that's fine. It's a four, whatever. Meanwhile, and then so then Gal blocks the realm. She dies. His Gal's like an, an 8K. Well, I'm like, all right. Well, I'll swing with my Gal. He has to block. He's at six. He has to block. So now our Gal's trade. I'm like, I'll swing with Emperor. The mistake was he did not kill Emperor with the Chaos because now he's got three monsters that he can't act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I swing with Emperor. Then I activate Dragon. No, he was at five. I swing with Emperor for the six. I activate Dragon and swing. He goes to activate his Dragon to block. I'm like, ah, oh, you can't. And he was like, oh, god damn it. Like, he just didn't. He's just like, I, and that's why he was like, I misplayed so badly. And But it's so hard. Like, when my board goes so wide, like, you just. There's, so there's a lot stuff. of cards on yeah. the table. <laughs> yeah. And Adam was saying, like, if I would have done it different, like, swing with Gal first. If mm-hmm. you swing with Gal, even if he chaos walkers, the Emperor, he still, does, he still runs out of blockers. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And the, the Cobalt Racers die for free. Yeah. So he you, you, he trades his dragon for like one of your dragons, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it was a good match. Like you know, like Hunter's a great player. Obviously, he's won two LQs, and he's yeah. quali- he's qualified for Nats he knocked several out times. Of, uh, top sixteen at Kansas. Yep, he's a good player, and so anytime you can get you know get a set off of him, it's it's like man, that's good. You know, and you know he even said like he's like, did you play this deck today specifically just to ranch me? And I was like, no, I, <laughs> I played it because I think it's actually really really good in the meta currently. And then I, then so going to top four, I had to play against Jason. I'm like, oh boy, here is ice for the fifth time today. And I'm like, all right, I know this match. It's good. It's two out of three. I'm pretty much, you know, my deck is favored in two out of three over ice. And as the story, as the same fucking story goes every time, all right, cool, I get game one. Get game one pretty clean. Mm-hmm. Game two, you, you, you actually played game two very, very differently. Like, you were just on the DGS value train. Like, yeah. no, not much discard. Um, granted, my hand was just five backups, so you would think that's really good, right? Mm. I didn't see any forwards for a while until he's, like, four forwards deep. I'm like, well, I'm kind of fucked here. So he, he just runs over me. He just runs over me game two. Game three is a heartbreaker because yeah, like my um, heart broke as well dude, my heart broke after the game it, 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 oh, like, you, you saw like the pieces you needed and I just my deck was just too slow and I think where I made the biggest mistake was and I, and I, I beat myself up over it on the way home because there was an opportunity earlier on where I had a chance to play a third backup mm-hmm. I should have just taken the next couple points of damage played that third backup and then I would have been so much better off like I I didn't listen to my own advice and I think that was where, like, that's where I think it all just kind of snowballed from there. If I would have just gone to four, played the backups, I could have done so much more with my turns. Mm-hmm. Instead of that, because I really had to, like, manage my CP. And I was like, man, I just, if I really had that, and I, like, every turn I'm like, man, if I had that third backup, I'd be in such a better position. And I just, yep. Yeah, like I said, you'd be able to play anything you top that. Pretty much, and that was the. It was funny. That was the only game I didn't do that, and the only set I didn't do that, and I paid for it. So like, I'm not. I was. I was upset at the situation because here I am again, third LQ. I dumpster my way through the tournament. I get to top cut. I, I beat a really good player. I'm like, man, I took care. I, I beat the one person that I was legit worried about winning this thing. And then I then I then I lose to the boy. I, I get I get turbo. I get turbo. Nobody likes Booster, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it was still a good day of cards. Um, I'm, I'm bummed that this is the third LQ that I played my ass off again. I feel like I outplayed everybody in the room again, but I couldn't finish my plate. Those goddamn chips and salsa, man. I love them. I love them. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, my prize packs were fine. I ended up pulling a foil wall. So I was like, well, 
I guess I made my money back and then some. <laughs> Silver lining. Yeah, but it, it was a good day of cards, and you know, I, I'm not mad. Like J- Jason, just he actually played a really smart game two and three against me, and that's just a testament to him playing a, a deck that people say is brain dead. The uh, DGS version isn't. The only matches I really remember, and I hate like this, I feel awful just going about this, but like the matches I really remember was against Danny, mm-hmm. um, and you, both mm-hmm. of our matches, like. Like, everything was kind of autopilot for me because I was so tired. I was mm-hmm. on coffee, I was drinking sodas. Like, I was just like, I need to go to sleep, but I got to stay awake for this. Um, and when I hit you, when I went against you the first time, it was like, Jesus Christ, this deck is nuts. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's what woke me up. Like, mm-hmm. getting that, the amount of, like, just forwards and monsters, I was like, I can't. I can't go wide on this. I can't answer this. I don't have removal for this. Like, mm-hmm. and I got dumpstered. Like, I felt dumpstered on that. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I can still make top eight. Why not? You know, oh. keep going. Keep pushing through it. So get there. Get to top eight. We meet again. And, like, again, first game, I felt dumpstered. Like, I was like, all right, I got to play this differently. And I remember during uh, Danny's match is how I played the deck differently is I went wide mm-hmm. instead of discard. Yep. And that's what I did to you. Mm-hmm. And it paid off like yeah. you know i i out outrun you and that's actually my type of gameplay in general because i've been playing mambo forever mm-hmm. and so i was like i can do the same thing and then discard when i need it correct um and when i got that game dude i was heartbroken for you mm-hmm. i didn't want to do it um i just i was i was in the mood like i was in the mode with, with the mateus and then top deck on another mateus it was like it it was clean plays on the end on my part but when it happened i was just like I didn't expect this to happen. Like, well, that's okay. I felt like Barry Sanders at that moment because my, my own line failed me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you know, I, I proceeded to the next match and that's a scrubbed out. Like it was just like, first off, I was on tilt because I was like I was hot, I was sweaty, I was nervous. I go into the match and I didn't realize this guy was literally taught two days ago. LT one five G. Yeah, <laughs> fifteen one, games. Last like fifteen games. Yeah, like what? Like and. I realized this when he starts picking up every card I play. Once he learned the, like the second round, he had the cards unlocked. He was fine, and he was steamrolling me. Like it was, I misplayed horribly, and I'll tell you why I misplayed. Like, <laughs> oh, I was so mad. Yeah, I know, Curtis. Sure. I know you were disappointed, and I, I mean, I, there's no excuse for it. I have no excuses. The only you might you're the, just smoking after that. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing I can say is I did not prep enough for, with that deck for the event like you said like you noticed there's things that you you wouldn't have done that I did oh, one, oh absolutely yeah and like and that's because I played I literally went to my local shop like two days before and played Scott like three mm-hmm. games before work and then I went to Steven's house the, net, the like the following night or that night I forget um, and we played like what six games yeah we played, we played like a few rounds yeah we, we went in and I was doing well with it I was like alright I can play it it seems pretty auto mm-hmm. I see why people are like well, it's a Playing testament it. to the deck. Like, so, yeah. So it, sometimes it just wins. Right, right, right. Yeah, and sometimes it just poops on you. No, like, so he, it is. So here's the thing with, with like the deck. So like, a bad player can play it and do good with it, but it also depends on like who you are playing against. Because if you are playing against a high caliber player Which, with that deck. The decisions are much more critical. Oh yeah, yeah. And than, than I'm just not, a steamroll. Like I said, I'm not. I, I don't want to. I, I went into this wrong. I'm not going to say it is brain dead. It's not because, like, yes, you can autopilot your way through like the lower matches, but once you get to those high caliber players, you do have to sit and think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's not. You, yeah, you, if the, you keep you the wrong the card. You're done. Of turns. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not. I'm not, not taking anything away because you're, no, you're no. a good player. Right. You know how to play this game. Right. Like, you had those turns where you were in the tank and you had to. You had to outplay me on turns. Right. DGS is that that version of Turbo does afford you the ability to outplay your opponent mm-hmm. during the match. Right. Like, you literally have to. The thing with DGS is like the way you outplay them is I'm going to keep this card because I'm going to predict that this is going to happen. Yeah. Right. And that's if you make that wrong call, that's when the deck poops on you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. And that that was like, like yeah, I'm completely wrong when I say that. Like I mean, the first iteration of Turbo Ice I felt was pretty. Auto oh, hit or miss. Yeah, ours, pretty hard. ours was pretty. Yeah. I mean, like you, you said it yourself. You don't like to run it. When I was running DGS, I felt dirty. Yeah, I had to but, do it at least once myself. So. But yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> get, get but, island games. But like, it's not. It's a good. It's a good deck. It's. I'm not in any way knocking the person that created it. You know, at all. It's a great deck. Um, I just don't have enough practice with it to mm. to close out what I wanted. And I want to congratulate the guy that beat me. Does anyone know his name? Uh, like his name was like Will or well, Allen or something like that. Yeah, I, mean, I think it was I, Will. I went out to him the other day because like I saw him asking questions about certain cards, and I was yeah. like, "Yo, did, like, did, are you new to the game?" 
And and then I overheard him talk to Hunter Nance about like the, the mm-hmm. amount of times he played. And I mean, quite honest, I'm impressed. No, I'm no, impressed no, no, no. Too. That's yeah, that's the I'm thing. Not taking anything away from him. Like, After yeah, getting, it took us a minute to like read the cards. Like I'm just straight up impressed. Like, right, right. The, like he's it's a good card player, regardless. Yeah, of he he the plays the fundamentals. He's a, he's a former Magic player. Like when I played, like I said, I was on tilt the first game. The second game, I sat there like. Hello, darkness, my old friend, was my theme song <laughs> after the match. I sat there for a minute, depressed, and just stood up, got the prize support, and wanted to leave. But, at, at, you know, I congratulated him over by the prize support, shook his hand again. I said, you know, congratulations, you outplayed the crap out of me. Good for you. Like, and, you know, the salt aside, like, the fact that this man played that many games, went to LQ, won it. And I think that just... Is it a true testament to the player? And I think that's, like, a good message for the community, too. Mm-hmm. Like, for a new player that played only 15 games, beating Turbo Ice Discard in the finals for their LQ win, and this is a deck that the entire community has been, like, you know, scratching their heads or getting angry about. Mm-hmm. If you stick to the fundamentals, you can win, and mm-hmm. you can perform very well. You just have to play a little bit different differently, but, you know, it's definitely possible. I just wish that would have been me in that final match. I think it was, I, I, I really, and this is, again, not taking anything away from anybody, but had I beat Jason in top four, I'm You would have taken it. I, and so that's, why I was, that's why I was sad, because I, like, I even told them, I was like, you know, I wish I scooped to you. Mm-hmm. Like, or, like, I wish I just, I wish I lost, mm-hmm. because I wanted you to go. Like, well, that's the other thing, too, man. Like, I'll never ask anybody to scoop to me. Like, I, no, and I, I know I, you wouldn't, because you're, you're prideful and you want to win your well, match. I like winning on my own. Yeah, match, exactly. I know I'm good enough. Right. But, you know, like... Like even on the ride, ride to the LQ. Like I told Stephen, you know, like I'm, I'm not sure where I feel about going to California. I mm-hmm. want to go. Mm-hmm. Money's a factor for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I work at a hobby shop. I'm going for assistant manager. Like I have to be there to do things. And like, if I had won, yes, I would go. But like, give or take, like I was ser- seriously struggling during that that final match with mm-hmm. you on whether to throw it. Mm-hmm. And I don't. That's that's a horrible thing to do. But, like, I wanted my friends to go. Like, I want Steven to go. I want you to go. I know Adam's going. I know Curtis going. And you guys are the four that hang out. Like, I've been the guy, like like Curtis said in my last podcast, I'm kind of the local hero. Mm. I sit back. I build the community. I keep the guys having a good time at, at our shop. And, like... You live long enough. <laughs> well, you see it. So the villain. The villain. <laughs> <laughs> you got the name of your episode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's uh now now it's happened and now I think I'm just gonna sit out and hopefully the boys can get in there. It's okay though, but overall it's, it's been a good like LQ season. Like I'm not upset. I'm trying to go to the one tomorrow. I've got you to. Should. Uh, I've, got to. I've, I've got to. I've got to. If you need to hide in the car, we can do it. You're a big. No, guy. better yet, <laughs> let him go, please. <laughs> yeah. Let him go. It's my time. It's my time. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it I'm out. Gonna, I'm gonna like... sleep on this one tonight. I mean, I'm gonna do some meditating, mm-hmm. and, and maybe, maybe Opus Four Steve gonna do a little comeback. You know well, what I mean? I, I think Opus Four Steve should probably pull out Opus Opus Six standard <laughs> units and. But I'm probably... telling you, <sighs> just, if you can come out tomorrow, I'll put on my serious game face and not test decks anymore. I'll play to kill. Should have been doing that the whole time. What are you talking about? I, I got a test for like what I want to play in Nats, but you know. But that's all right, yeah. Like, yeah, we'll we'll get there. Um, like I've got the I've got the support of the community behind me. Like, they know I'm good enough. I know I'm good enough. And gosh darn it, people like me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and I know I'll get there. Like, if I don't get it before Nats, I'll fly out a day early, play in the last chance qualifier, crash with one of the Cali boys if I have to. And then just make top four there, and it, it's making for a great Cinderella story, right? Like right. I, I, I come so close to all these qualifiers. I fly out to the LQ, I win that one. Then I go to go fourteen and zero in Nets. Then I go to go top four in Nets, and then I don't go to Worlds because I don't have a passport. <laughs> Beautiful. It's 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 like it's it's, it's you know it's kind of like Lethal Weapon three, but not at all. But, not at all. <laughs> but uh, it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. No, it was definitely a good good day of cards for sure. Like like you killed it today. You really did, Chris. Oh, thanks, man. And, like... <sighs> guess I'm, I'm just more upset now at Adam, because Adam taught that guy how to use Ramu. <laughs> 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 like, now I just I just have a sour taste in my mouth. <laughs> man, a bunch of, bunch, of, bunch of heels over here on this couch. <laughs> just taught him how to use heels. It. He just taught him how to play the mirror. <laughs> so, I mean, Steven, team good guys over here. <laughs> team value over here. I'm just here. trying to help somebody out. Not, not, not damage my teammates. Come on, now. So speaking of good games and just like all around good card games, we have uh, something we're working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Code name Meta Lotion. 
Oh, <laughs> metal, the metal lotion circuit? TTM. <laughs> the metal lotion. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like Okimoto doesn't know. Oh, yeah, I, I told him about Okimoto. I told him that's where we're going to like call it. Well, not really, but <laughs> we'll call it Surprise. metal lotion. <laughs> he had the same reaction, but... <laughs> That's right. But yeah, we're working uh, on getting the circuit ready for the VA area. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I know, uh, just you know, logistics are still being worked out. But ideally, we're, ideally, we're gonna wait till after Worlds to just kind of take advantage of what you know the the just the the guaranteed lull that's gonna happen. Because mm -hmm. I figure Crystal Cup season probably because I, the, like the ARG like stuff doesn't really exist anymore. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't the, know. If the, the Pennsylvania qualifier was ARG. Was it really interesting? Yeah. It, today it happened today. Yeah, too. Well, good, yeah. good. That's like one that they've had. And I know Max Williams was judging that by. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool, but like I mean, like the the, the that circuit doesn't exist anymore. Um, they're uh, do, are they still doing petite cups? I don't know. I think they only do that. They like, did that. They did that to give us pretty much throwing us a bone for we wanted some competitive play. Okay, yeah. so we probably won't see those anymore. So now, like we're gonna have that lull before like Crystal Cup season starts back again for next year. So why not take one of the better communities on the East Coast? Which, you know, we're not two darn horns, we just kind of are. We've got the results, we've got the credentials. <laughs> we put the groundwork in, it's here. Exactly. And, and, and amongst all three of us, Virginia Beach, <clears throat> Richmond, and, and Fredericksburg, I mean, we're, we're like 50, 50 strong. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of us to be. Oh, yeah. Our oh. qualifiers are hard, dude. Yeah, no, no, no joke. No yeah, joke. it's really you hard. You don't even have to. Yeah. Yeah, dude. There's, there's nothing but killers that play. Yeah. And then, so we're looking to do like a, each store kind of combine forces, do a tournament there. Like, and you know, obviously with you know us being, you know, Big fans of FF6. We're looking to call like the World of Balance cir circuit, mm -hmm. and then the top eight is the World of Ruin, and then you have your your supreme champion. We're looking to get maybe like custom play match for yeah. the top eight. Oh, and then like also that. another idea we were stuff. toying with is the winner of the circuit series gets to decide the theme of the next season. Yeah, absolutely. Just just it's your it's you know your mantle as the champion. You get to choose. You know we want to do like trophies, really cool prizes. Um, I think that's the next step to really solidifying our community i know me and adam have said on our podcast that we're gonna like maybe step back from playing after like nats and world just not like not play right but really focus more on the content kind of nurture the community like i want i want i want to have one of those proud dad moments where i see like ron and colin and those guys like go off to nats make <laughs> me proud son <laughs> watch them come back with a championship like watch them win our locals like i mean like ron won that memorial day tournament i was super happy i was like man like we we've, we've got a, we've got the like killers in our own backyard, and I want to nurt again. It goes back to nurturing that competitive side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got that tournament next week, where like I I I'm paying for I paid for the prizes out of pocket. Like mm -hmm. you know we've got like a really dope Sephiroth bust. We've got like a Jeez. Mog uh, Mog Eleven, which is kind of relevant, you know, from the new set. A plush. Uh, I know Battlegrounds is going to have uh, you know prize support. I'm trying like, to say Sephiroth's not a relevant card, please. No. <laughs> He's, there's no good version of him that's like playable. <laughs> I mean, imaginary champion had his like one week shine. Yeah, it's true. He's a good card. Now the correct play is you play uh, four drop Sephiroth and you magic pot him Ooh. into eight drop Sephiroth. Sap and then you still lose the game. That sounds very, that sounds very much like a but Chucky. You, that's that's a Chucky Russ move if I ever heard one. But you did it in style. style. You went from a four drop to an eight drop. I'd rather just Renoa my own Dark Lord and really just be a badass. <laughs> Renoa my own Dark Lord? Yeah, that's how you do I'm that. I'm a middle 20 card. Yeah. I mean, when Get we were fucked. talking about most losses at Gen Con, we were like, what, what do we do? And like, Fire oh, Ice, no, Dark you, Lord Renoa. You paradise yourself as early as possible. <laughs> like, turn two, Elder Narsh. Paradise. paradise. Pass. <laughs> so Yay! It's like a so you, you play fire, uh, uh, fire, ice, Renoa, Dark Lord, and then you throw some. You throw you a, throw, a, you, throw you throw a cam, and a cam on so you can search the Elnarch, and then three Ooh. three of Elnarches, and then you just try and these are either you're gonna mill yourself out. Or are you gonna kill yourself with Elnarsh? Yeah, you play, what happens you first? Play Spiritus too. You know, I mean, you just have to yeah, play Spiritus, a bunch of yeah, you can search, yeah. star symbols. You just need like three star symbols. You play yep. a star symbol, search, uh, search out Elnarch next turn. You just, Use it. Paradise. Paradise. Pass, pass. I'm the best at this. <laughs> I am the first to bleed. I am the victor. But anyways, the last question so we can uh, end the podcast. Do you guys think the meta is fully defined? Um, well, we, we, we just, we just, whoop, we just pump the brakes and turn, um, turn the car around. Um, I'm going to say no. Um, I think we've got an idea of like like I think some like most of the basic archetypes have been discovered. Obviously, 
Viking builds are very, very popular. They're very, very strong. But I, I don't think we've seen everything. I think this set has a lot to unpack. There's a lot of value cards, a lot of combo pieces in this set that I think people are going to be discovering. I, I have yet, and this is just me personally, I have yet to even start messing with Fire Ice. And I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good cards in both of those elements that are great splashes for other archetypes and decks. And now, we're, now we, li we live in a game where we, we, we live in a game. <laughs> we're, we're now playing a game where four and five color decks are extremely viable. Right. The, Final the, Fantasy II? That's what I'm saying, man. Like, the combinations are endless. Like, a great example, that Final Fantasy II deck from Gen Con. No one's ready for that. That, that deck is but, insane. But here's the thing with that deck, and Curtis brought this in. It makes a valid point. The more popular that deck gets, the worse it's Well, Leon gonna just get. comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leon just takes a hike, and he gets replaced by another, like, just good card. Oh, Paul. Oh. Yeah, my Paul, <laughs> there you go. Like, like the, I think I think the fact that a card like Sid 2 exists, create like, you, you have all these engines to play these. Like, you have your Leos, your Sid 2s, your Camel Knots. Like, there's cards that reward you for playing multiple colors. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the direction the game's going to go. Like, they're going to start nurturing that a lot more. Now, like, you can sit across from somebody and they could, like, like the fact that we live in a world, how, like, up until, up until Opus 6, it was Wind, Water, YRP. Fuck that. That's old news. Now it's Earth, Wind, YRP, because you have the ability to play Yuna without having to play Blue. Or if you really want to play Blue, you can do it super, super easy without having to commit, like, X amount of cards in your deck to make it viable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, archetypes are, archetypes are changing colors. They're adding more colors. Like, the game is very, very... Dead. And I've only been playing it since January. The game is so different. Than, no, no. When, uh, when did Opus 4 come out? Like, like, December? Last December. Uh, November. Okay. The, the, last week, the, la the, last, <coughs> the last few weeks of November. Was it right before Thanksgiving? I think it was October. Okay, so... I, no, no. I, well, it was well, 4? I think so. Either way, I've been playing since Opus 4, and the game is tremendously different. Like, you know, yes. you wouldn't think about playing a deck that was more than two colors. Now it's like, oh, two colors? Well, that's some, that's some old square shit. Let me, uh, here's, here's my five colors. And I got some light and dark cards in there. I'm running all, I got all the colors. I got all the colors. Yeah, like, it, it, I, so, no. I told you all that to you. Yes, color. No, I, I, color. I don't think the meta's defined because I think there's still so much more to unpack in this set. I'll, I'll come in there and agree with that. Like, um, just... Everyone was so concerned when they saw Turbo Ice come out. Mm -hmm. And now you look at it, everyone, you know, I kept telling everybody, I mean, yes, it, it sucks, it's happening, it's in a, the meta's in a weird place, but it's still early. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why it's so strong right now is because all these big events are happening and people are using it a lot. Correct. And uh, that's when the Vikings popped up, and now there's, like, Vikings everywhere. And it's, it's the development of meta. It always starts off really strong in the beginning, and then it kind of flips to another color. Mm -hmm. And right now you've got the, the multicolored decks that are coming out, and they're coming out of the gates, and they're swinging. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's really going to go towards, like, I think fire is going to be a big big deal coming up. I think they're finally going to, because a lot of people backed up from Minwoo for a little bit. Um, that'll be changed, obviously. We got Vikings back. Uh, the Vikings package, you put a Minwoo in there, it's a good good setup. Well, also, too, man, you live in a world where you can play Mono Fire, but you can run Camelot and Chaos and jam backup destruction Hecaton chair and not not worry about it. Right. Like, you could have a 98% Mono Fire deck with, like, five Earth cards, and that's doable because of cards like Camelot. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying you would, but, like, the fact that you can and you can test that. And I mean, it it's crazy that, like, you think about, we talk about cards that, are, like, that were, like, terrible or whatever, and now everybody's, like, people are putting cards, like, we're talking about, like, the goddamn tomato. Yeah. yeah. On that card. We're like, that card sucks. <laughs> and then now we're like, oh, 3K? It's actually pretty good. It's really yeah. Yeah. The, the, the meta now is where 3K is the sweet spot, because not only do yes. you worry about Vikings, you have Argath. And that is Valmaturge. so weird. So, no. <laughs> yeah. Valifor. People are playing like 2CP Valifor. I did today. In Opus oh, 5, it was all about 9K. Just big, fat, beefy beaters. Now it's like, here's my 3K that gets a 2K. I'll draw a card. And now you're in trouble because I have this on the board. Right. I haven't played Cyclops in Mono Lightning since Opus 3. You probably are now. <laughs> oh, oh he it's did. in there. It's in there. You flip, it you flip it off the top, you're like, kill all those guys. Yeah, yeah, I don't care if you're drawing five nice board away. Cut and <laughs> yeah. like, to build off of that, like I also agree with everyone. Like the meta is definitely not defined just yet, and I think for this format, 
there's going to be a lot more decks now that are more than two colors just because you can splash, like you were saying before, like Wind, Earth, YRP. Like, if you want to play water, you can just put Layla Vikings in it. And that's literally all the water you need, and you can still play it consistently. Yep. Because you just pitch the Viking for like any high cost card, or whatever color you're supposed to be And then Layla playing. gets it right back. And then you get it right Wind back. Water and you draw a card. Yeah. And you draw a card. Dude, Wind Water Standard Units, I think, is a very real deck again because three color monsters does not exist anymore. I'm not saying that deck is bad. It's not the boogeyman it used to be because decks are faster now. Decks know how to deal with that's it not, now. That's not the issue to me. The issue to me is that there's so much variance in decks, and what three color monsters wants to do is like control the entire game mm -hmm. and you can't do that if you can't control what the fuck's happening yeah like i i think hunter's on the right track with his build like i feel mm -hmm. like his build is, is getting there but like it's just hard to control the whole board because yeah. like it, and there's, there's just so, so much going points. on now. and layla vikings at all and believe it or not like against a control deck Layla Viking puts a lot of pressure on early because that's, exactly. that's, that's two bodies. Two bodies. Yeah. Yeah. This is two bodies. It's two bodies, and if you want to respond to it, they're gonna get a card back. Right. Exactly. It's I mean, pure value. You essentially pick because you're pitching the Viking for the Layla because you're just gonna get the back, and then you pitch one other card. But the fact that you draw the Viking, those two forwards cost you two CP. Correct. And then when the Viking goes, you're those done. two forwards were free. Pretty much, and then you know, people for I don't know if it's just something that people aren't messing with. Five CP Paladin is just a just an ungodly ass beater. Yeah. <laughs> aggro decks, you just put that guy just Paladin. Deal with it. You can't get through that. Well, the best feeling. I mean, you just it. summon kill it, right? They play Dottaluma yeah, and you're you like Paladin. Paladin. <laughs> What's that? The best is when they play Dottaluma and you're like. Paladin. That's okay. <laughs> he shits on Paladin. He shits on all these, like, all these aggro decks. Like, you just put that wall up, and it's like, okay. And you have to make them have removal. But at that point, you're playing Wind Water. You just remove the attacker. Yeah, the and, best removal frame was, like, the Ebola's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You have to be playing specific cards. Like, I think, and then Ranger is still really, really good. Um, I love you that. now have Layla Viking in the deck. I mean, look at the decks we were running at ARG Charlotte. I mean, you guys are both running uh, Wind Water. Yeah. Wind Water Sand Units. I was running an iteration of Wind Water Earth. Yeah. And I think Wind Water Earth could definitely make a comeback now. Yeah, I, I think. A multicolor you, factor. You could easily play Wind Water Standard Units, Splashing Earth, just for shit like Star Warrior Sun, Light. Sh and, Warrior, and then yeah. the Warrior Light. Yeah. The bringing a standard unit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, you can just play that thing off of like Star Sybil or whatever. Like, right, and he also brings up backups. Too. Yeah, you can get like a Correct. gladiator back or something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, there's, and, and, and we and we just like thought of all that on the fly, right? Right. And that's what this. That's what Opus Six has done to the game. Yeah, there's and just I'm, so many. Neat and decks. like literally for like deck building, if you want to play any color, like just splash it in whatever deck you're playing, you can do that for any color right now in this mm -hmm. Opus. I'm not going to spell all the secrets, but like it is possible if you want to splash fire in a deck consistently, you can do it. You want to splash water in a deck consistently, that's not even part of your main strategy, you can do it. You yeah, can do shit, it. Man, play control deck with three Ramus, fucking go nuts, you can do it. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it's a very, the game is in a really fantastic place. Right. And now, it's we're really, gonna, or now we're going to play some, some guy in an LQ, and they're going to be playing like fucking two colors, <laughs> like they're going to be playing like fire ice, and then out of nowhere, I'm going to get hit with a Ramu when I try to offset something. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> hey, sometimes when you're playing Modern Fire, you just hit Odin's off the top. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it coming. <laughs> That's set what I'm saying. Set it like, it, it's such a neat place, man. Like, it's, I'm, I'm all about it. I'm every about it. every time a set comes out, it just excites me because the brain start, the cogs start moving. And that's, that's the best part about the set being a new release. And uh, well, I hope, I hope I, it's not as basic as... Like, Opus 5 was a super basic... Stick. It was like high power forwards. Yeah. And they were pretty straightforward. Yeah. And it was just like, you want to get new people into the game? It, Here's a card like Wall. It was yeah. It's, it, it's, it's basically a smaller this set. Is, but this I is like Opus it, 5 and It was a show. smaller set that just brought a lot more to the table. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Opus 5 was zip flop. Yeah. Who's got the bigger... Well, yeah, like, yeah, like you play a card like Wall, he hits the table, and you realize his dick has been on the table for two minutes already. <laughs> That's Wall. All right, so with that, I think we're going to call that a wrap. Wait, so wait, before, before we go, before we go. So last episode, I said that we were going to get rid of Kyle. He hasn't been here, so I win. Oh, y'all's going to get him out of here. He's gone. I'm just kidding. He'll be back. 
<laughs> yeah, man, this was such a good this, this was such a good conversation. We actually completely forgot to talk about like Gen Con and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. Hey, but that but gives you guys room for what you guys. We got another episode. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what? Maybe. Well, catch the episode of RV Returners where they will talk about their experience at Gen Con. Yeah, but, but uh, also keep listening to the the FXBG Turks. They uh. They do good work. They, uh, they're the reason our scene is what it is today. So, you know, if you show us love, show them love too. That's all, that's all I got to say. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if you guys want to hear more, just follow us on our SoundCloud page and follow us on Facebook as well. See you guys tune in next time.